Jesus precious name we pray father we thank you we give you praise we give you glory we exalt your name we ask that we will drink of your wisdom we will partake of your understanding with you is the fountain of life may we see light in your light may we be humble enough to accept that which you bring our way may we be determined to make changes where needed in the name of jesus we speak to wandering hearts we speak to distracted minds we speak to prejudice we speak to preconceived notions we speak to uh, traditional thinking we speak to all kinds uh, of understanding and knowledge that is trying to lift itself against the knowledge of God in these lives. Online, on ground, those that will listen thereafter, we bring such thoughts to the captivity of the name of Jesus. Amen. Say that the blood of Jesus is against you. Amen. You have no portion in our midst. Amen. We receive your spirit, O oh God. In Jesus precious name we pray amen. amen amen all right I have quite a ground to cover so um, right perspective to relationships that is the uh, umbrella or the direction the team we've looked at differences between male and female under this and today like i said i want to look at red flags but before i get into the issue of red flags uh, as usual i want to make uh, some basic input so that you understand the mind of god marriage is a serious business every one of us wants to marry but um I think the glamour side of the ceremony has beclouded many minds from the gravity of the responsibility that comes with marriage or the enormity of the uh, burden that marriage can bring. Now, when I mean, when I say burden, uh, we use it in negative light most times, but Jesus himself says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, you are carrying a burden. He says, I will give you rest. He says, come and take and learn of me taking my yoke upon you because i'm meek and lowly in heart so jesus is replacing the burden with another burden so when uh, you come to him whatever he tells you is going to place a demand thank you it says take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i'm meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest unto your souls so he's just telling you drop the one you are carrying and take the one I am giving you. Remember in another place, he told them, if you're going to follow me, you have to carry your cross and follow me. Cross, like most theologians will say, is the point where your will and the will of God intersects each other. And at that point, you will have to allow God to do most of the joining and you do the carrying. The carrying you do actually is just that you accept his will. So, when we say carry your cross, it's not a physical thing that you are carrying, but a mindset that you are substituting with the thinking of Christ. So, marriage is a serious business. I've always said it since I can remember as a young preacher, started preaching. I've always had uh, that kind of grace, as it were, to know some things, even though it may look strange. And I keep saying it every year, it's better not to marry and fulfill your purpose than to marry and not fulfill your purpose because at the end of the day it is the purpose that counts so you will see husband and wives you see couples they come together most times but they come together not understanding the reason why god has brought them together when people come to me speak to us marriage issues the first thing i always ask is simple are you sure this person is who god wants for you if you hesitate, then it's obvious that you made a choice when you were not sure. Now, if you say no, or yes, this is the person that God wants for me, then the next thing is, has God changed his mind? If God has not changed his mind, then why did God bring you together? Because most marriage problems is either people are too lazy to do the work, or they were not meant to marry each other from the beginning. 
marriage is God's idea. So it can't be wrong. And if you are going to enjoy it, you have to do it God's way. If Samsung gives you a phone, Apple gives you a phone, if you don't use it the way they told you to use it, you may be using the phone, but you are not optimally enjoying it. There are things that you've discovered by accident on your phone that you didn't know it was there, and you may have been paying money to even get those things done. Then one day you just accidentally press something, and you'll be like, oh, this thing is here all along. Then you start uh, asking yourself, ah, okay, if you can do this, you should be able to do this. The same thing in marriage. If you find out something about your spouse that is awesome, that should tell you that there are more depths that you can go and still find something better. But our mind is always focused on the wrong. If uh, I tell you now that 300 people resurrected at my crusade, most of it, you will, it's possible, it's not possible. But if they tell you a pastor raped 20 women, you will believe. You will even share it. Because we are designed, or let me not say we are designed, the fall of man designed us or redesigned us to always want to believe that which is negative. So it is easy to look at what your spouse is doing and you focus on what is wrong. If you are a perfectionist like me, you will have to deal with your mentality. Because if you, <laughs> if you dot the eye, if it's not dotted the way I think the ink should be, chances are I will see that is probably uh, rife than anything. So you have to allow the word of God now retrain your mind. Because if you follow the Lord's way, you will succeed in ways you can't imagine. The reason why we are struggling is because we are not following the way of God. We want to do it ourselves. And chief uh, uh, among this is that many Christians marry unbelievers. And you will not succeed. I wish I can say it in a better way so that I will not sound like Old Testament prophet. So let me rephrase that. You will fail seriously. If you marry somebody that is not a born again child of God, the devil you know is not happening in this case. It's the angel you don't know that God is going with. If God tells you not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, you can't now be wiser. You say, oh, nobody among the Christians is meeting up to my standard. So maybe you reduce your standard or let us review your standard in the light of the scriptures. Because that your standard at times may not even be scriptural. We all want things, but we never ask God, do I really need this? In 2020, is in Benway now, fantastic uh, protege of mine. He was asking me a question, was running up service, and he's like, he has a call. I told him from the first day I could see that, and I trained him rigorously for that one year for just that call before he went to Bible school. And today he's doing well, doing the will of God. But I know he was trying to decide who to marry. And there's this error that pastor's wife must be beautiful. So you see young people with the call of God looking for beautiful sister to marry because the, the beautiful part is a reward for us that have been following God very well. It's not all pastor's wives that are physically beautiful. The <laughs> pastor has come, yes. <laughs> So he was asking me that I oh, asked the thing of two people, but this one is finer than this one. And I listened to him for 20 minutes. I said, all you are telling me is what you want. But have you asked yourself what you need? I said, I don't understand. Then he quoted on popular marriage uh, people and all that. I said, respect to them. I'm not debating with anybody. But if you are going to be a pastor, first and foremost, it is not a beautiful, well-dressed woman you need. You first of all need a woman that can pray. So if I was in your shoes, I'll be asking God to show me the spiritual state. Then you just marry a, a glorified... It's not even that she's a devil. She's just wrong. How do you put that in? A wrong, a round peg in square hole, square peg, a round hole, uh, tomato, tomato, whichever one applies. Because you'll be saying, this lady is not good for me. She's the devil. But you see, you are putting her in an establishment, an environment that she's not really, really, really prepared for. She doesn't even want it. In the first 20 things she desired of the Lord and she's seeking after, being a pastor's wife, one... It's not even featured in the first 20. So you now say, sit down. This is how you are going to preach. You can't be my wife and not preach. So in preaching, it does not just confuse the devil. Even you and the entire church, you are left wondering that what is happening here. 
because you are not asking God, is this what I want or what I need? We all need tall, dark, and handsome ladies. All men want a woman that is um, a Beyonce in uh, look, can cook like uh, <laughs> uh, give me a, no, uh, I don't want that one. Give me a better cook now. I will come up with one, don't worry. I will come up with one. Then you want that cook, then you want the one that can nurse a child, like the Wesley mother. And you want her to be humble, like Mother Teresa. Ah. Only one, thank you. But you cannot find full packaging anywhere. If a grass is green somewhere, go and ask them. They are paying a lot of Nepal bills because they are watering it. So you, you are staying one side, you are looking at it, that, ah, if, if my wife can just be like mama. Maybe I'll show you mama 20 years ago. And mama of now. And the work that has gone in on both sides. So you will know that nobody arrives there overnight. You till your ground. So all this unrealistic expectation. He must be able to speak in tongues for 20 hours. Even Jesus. The one that we worship and adore. Which is 20 hours. Have you seen your Bible that he did 20 hours non-stop? He just said you should pray without season. Then the brother knows that's what you are looking for. So every time he sees you, the, the prayer is low. But immediately you open the door. <laughs> it will be like, ha. <laughs> say, I like brothers that. Ha. Shadabarakata. Then you will say, you are speaking to yourself in tongues. Continue. So God didn't design that you should marry an unbeliever. I don't care the rationale behind it. I don't care how they want you to present it. I don't care how, uh, eh, yes, if he's going to charge, you can. No, we don't Christianize things. We are preaching change. So you can't be someone that is just coming to church. You have to be a Christian that is coming to meet your maker. They are not the same thing. I'm not in the serious business. That's what I'm still emphasizing. Because I had to find the Greek word for marriage. I realize in all my study, that is the only thing I never did Greek or Hebrew about. <laughs> it's from a word, gamos, they, they moved it into English and Greek word, and it means two things. It means to become somebody else, then it means to become somebody's own. At times, it's either you be, most of the time, we become somebody's own, without becoming someone else in the relationship. So just give me your name. <laughs> but keep me the way I am. I don't take nonsense. You talk to me like that, I slap you. So marriage is to become another person. It's the word gamos. To become another person. All this I cannot change. This is the way my parents know I am. You, you, you better stay in your father's house. Say, in our village, men don't, men don't carry children. You better go and stay in your village and marry a village girl. Because in this kingdom, men will even back children and feed them if push comes to shove. Then he says to become another person's. That is another person's own. All this, I am, they know me when I was in class. I was like the misclass of my class. I don't take, I don't take, ah, when I speak as a, as a woman leader, everybody listens. We will create woman group for you. I've not noticed all the women emancipation people, they are single. And they will find wealth and so success to justify it. But we've also seen some of them at close quarters. That yearning inside. It's God that put it there. If God didn't design it for you, you will not even have the desire. Tell your neighbor, marriage is serious business. Preach like someone that has broken their fast. Marriage is serious Amen. business. Amen. Uh -huh. Thank you. You can't be immature and make it in marriage. You can't be carnal and succeed in marriage. You can't be stingy and succeed in marriage. Akagoms. Glue. Aradite. You can't succeed. You can't be fearful and succeed in marriage. You can't be heady, proud, and succeed in marriage. Because you must be determined to become the spouse that your partner needs. And the first thing I will emphasize here is first of all for the ladies. <laughs> a lady must know what God is preparing her for. Why you can't choose 
ultimately how uh let me how do i put it now you can't be the one to go and make the proposal but you must know what is god preparing you for because we always ask most times to say oh the woman is supposed to support the man's vision and all but even at that while the woman is single she's supposed to know what god is preparing her for if mary had lived a life anyhow she will not have qualified to give birth to jesus and this is not to make anybody feel bad or anything whatsoever understand the context of the preaching but what qualified mary to give birth to jesus was that she was a virgin nothing more nothing else it is not a choosing of grace it is not a choosing of anything god, when god speaks if the world looks for prepared fit vessels, meet for the masters used to find expression in their lives. Do you, 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 do you know that it was not Judas that was really, really meant to betray Jesus? Judas just was not fit not to betray Jesus. Because the Bible told us in the Old Testament that they were going to sell the master and it would be like a sheep shared among the sharers. And nobody knew who it was that even John had to ask for expo. So that means, physically speaking, Judas never looked like he was going to betray Jesus. So all this I am judging with what I see, judging what I see, the way it's packaged. All the people that have hurt me in my life are the least people I expected. But what has helped me is that I don't get hurt for long. So expectation is not always much. So I hardly get disappointed. And if I'm getting to the point where I am moving somebody from one level of trust to the other, like I had to do for one of my sons, I told him that you can't afford to behave like this around me because I am moving you in my mind to this level. I don't really have uh, too much expectation because I don't like, I can't be disappointed. So as a woman, ask God, what are you preparing me for? He may just tell you to go and know how to cook. That's all. You know, when it comes to purpose at times, we have made it so grandiose that we miss out on the fact that purpose of God is in segments. He has a purpose for marriage. He has a purpose for your work. He has a purpose for your Christian life. He has a purpose for even making you a friend to the person that you are friends with. So you have to find out what has been sent to do in the life of this person. Now, some people make it difficult, but the purpose is what will keep you going. So as a woman... Don't take a posture of the head when you are supposed to be developing character that makes the role of a wife possible. You always cross your leg at home. Mommy will tell you, come and do this one. I say, Mommy, no, now. Do you know how much they fix this nail? Ah. I say, Mommy, let the house help do it. Let the house help do it. And house elves have been trained so much that they are daughters. They have been trained so much that they even take over the husband. Now, you say the man is crazy. It's a devil. It's this one, it's that one. But the asset was simply becoming a vessel fit for the master's use. Now, I'm not encouraging that. I'm just telling you the ugly side of it. You know, some ladies, their mothers can't even teach them. Because their attitudes does not even make the room. For their mom to tell them the way you are going like this, this and this and this. And forget whether your dad is born again, your father is born again or not. Once they became parents, grace was released. He never said he that uh, a Christian that finds a wife. He never said a, a, a Jew that finds. He said he. So it's that is the we call it the sovereign provision of God. That thing that reigns on both the just and the unjust. So when your dad decided to be a father, grace was released for him to lead his family. He may not ultimately lead you to Christ, but if he is diligent enough, he can lead you the right path. How many Christian homes have produced demons for children? And I can tell you many unbelievers, beer drinking, uh, what they call it now, cigarette smoking dads that, that have raised disciplined lawyers. So be teachable. Find out purpose. So that you will not marry out of pity. You will not marry out of time is going. Oh, she has stayed with me so long as a friend. If I leave her now, what will people say? Or you marry someone that in mentality, you are not the same. Or you get pregnant when you should be developing yourself in school. 
or you travel abroad without a sense of direction or purpose. You've not even understood the power of resolution. So when you get there, you start behaving and dressing like them. You see, when people tell me those things, I tell them, I said, no, it's because you didn't stay long enough for us to help you. Now, culture affects dressing. European American culture celebrates not wearing clothes as it were. It is their culture, so I will not come there and tell you because they dress that way, they are, uh, uh, as it were, sinning, even though there are some of them too that are vehemently against it. But I will not distract myself with that. Now, you, we trained you here to cover the front, to cover the back, have a bit of sense. Then you get there and you start showing it. It shows. It doesn't show that you are modern. It shows that you had no moral compass before you went abroad. And most of the time, you will be, they, they roam. They are there. They roam up and down. No direction, no nothing. Then when they are like 43, 44, they start looking for purpose. So the few people that I oversee that are abroad, they know it's always, <laughs> when we have our session, it's always, uh, say no, because I, you will not turn out like that. If it's not working, abandon it, start coming back. Ah, and people used to say, your Bible used to say, if uh, tra travel is not traveling, you come back home. I don't know how to interpret that. That's the closest <laughs> English I can use. <laughs> you say, I'm a queen. Do you speak like one? Do you walk like one? Do you behave like one? Because it's queenly behavior. If there's any English like that, that will bring kingly attraction. But area girl behavior will bring area boy. So when people that are crazy begins to ask you out, two things. It's either the devil is after you, that is possible. And if you eliminate the devil, the next thing you ask yourself is, is there any stupidity in my life that is attracting all these kind of people? So be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. As a woman, you already have sensitivity. So develop it, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Play, plan, prepare as a woman, you need it. <laughs> Number two, emphasis. Be the man that, that can be submitted to. It's a foolish man that advances authority first with violence and words. True authority is advanced by lifestyle. Leadership is service. So as a man, you serve your home. You do things that you ordinarily, you, you know, this is not my age. Reverend George was sharing yesterday. I was catching up on some of the, uh, is this stuff I've missed? Then he was saying when he initially married, his wife grew up abroad. The issue of culture, I was thinking there, orientation. His wife grew up abroad in London. He grew up in a lonely of her. <laughs> a lot of her much job. <laughs> so when she came to Nigeria, they started dating. They were having some issues. And the issue is simple. You know when you are with the Brit, you are talking to the Brit, and you say something off limit, they say, come on, don't be silly. Why are you speaking like that? So I think one day they were having an argument, and the woman of God told the apostle, oh, George, that's very silly. Say, ah, what, what, what's the meaning of that? He said, no, I said, who is silly? Apart from that, I'm older than you. I'm going to be your husband. You go, ah. You know, said, no, you are taking it too far. Oh, we said, don't be silly. We are just saying, uh, you shouldn't be talking like, I said, uh, no, nothing like that. <laughs> Orientation. <laughs> he said, then later I realized that they needed to sit down and find the word of God that addresses their situation. So he brought his of her background. She brought a UK background. They put it together with the word and they came up with words that are acceptable, that will not offend you, that will not offend me. We assume the Holy Spirit will tell the other person, eh, he knows now that I don't like talking like that. Let him go. The Holy Spirit looking at both of you. That you are for the problem in the world. So he said, uh, you to, to just tell him that I don't like the way you speak. Don't let us use this again. You too. I don't like the Holy Spirit will just leave all the you know how many prayers the Holy Spirit is attending to. So it's not blow that you used to advance your role as a man. It's not blow. And it's more if, if I talk, you don't talk. If I breathe, you don't breathe. I am the man of this house. If, if I pass in the bosky, you say, I am the lion, I'm the fight. <laughs> cool down cool down <laughs> because you have to develop yourself to the point where the woman will find it easy to submit to you it's a lifestyle you give your word for instance you keep it there's no way they will not respect you over time but when you give 10 words nine and a half is a lie and i say eh, 
She has no respect. Are, are you respectable? So as a man, bring balance to everything you do. Your three states. Physically, for instance, as a man, be well groomed. Prophets in the New Testament are prophets now that is by the Spirit of God. We don't need your beer beer like bush to prove that you are a prophet. Trim it. I'm talking about grooming. Because you say it doesn't matter. It matters to, to women. It matters. Exercise. I'm talking about being physically fit. Do things that will make you fit. They, 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 they are talking to you. Two minutes. <laughs> Midnight call. You and the person you want to marry, so let's plan our future. Then they call you. On the phone, you are snoring. And you have only spoken for 10 minutes. You think it takes, you think it's ordinary energy to talk to you. Uh, ask. And you will be told. Stockholm made marriage easy for me. Or pre-marriage. They were selling lights one naira per minute. I bought two. So we can talk for the next six hours. And I don't get tired. Even when the talk is not interesting me, I am listening. I can say that now. It's 16 years after. <laughs> Even when I feel like, why can't this phone just die now? You know when phone is dead, you just be like, ah, God, I thank you. That there is no, there is no lie. I remember, I don't know if you remember, I said the phone, ah, it's dying, you know. Then, I think 10 minutes after, I sent her a text. There was a gossip, I wanted to gossip, so I sent her a text. She did not even talk about the gossip again. The reply I'm getting it, I thought you said the phone is dying. Ah, I'm like, ah, I shot myself in the leg. I was just trying to escape from plenty talk. So, exercise. Don't just get tired. Some ladies like uh, fitness this thing. So, they'll say, ah, let's jog together. If you know it's not going to work for you, come up with something scriptural. <laughs> say, godliness is profitable unto all things. Say, my fiance, why don't you let us wait on the Lord and be godly instead of what is running? Because in the running, it's just for you two people to spend time together. But if you go and run, Imagine you are the man that if anything happens, you carry the woman. 30 minutes into the journey, they are carrying you, pouring water on your head. <laughs> say, ah, uncle, <laughs> are you still here? You say, I'm here. Say, it's he, he just this thing. I, I don't know. Exercise, do something. Cut grass. You don't have to run. You don't have to wash plate. Anything that dissipates energy, do it. Before you get to, to, to 30, you're already looking like 50. There was a guy we saw yesterday and. When I told my friend the age, he did not believe. Now I said, that's what happens. When you just sit down, tetere nothing. Physically, dress well. Dress well. The smell of your clothes and perfume, they don't go well together. Because the clothes are seen worse days. Dress well as a man. It's going to make a difference. They can't hug you or shake you and you leave a lasting impression. <coughs> the other way now. It is not right. Because are the things that women look at. They like you spiritual, they like you speaking in tongues, but they will look at that. Do <laughs> if you faint, know that there is a problem. So you will go back and deal with it. It is not wrong. Deal with everything. Don't take chances. I have chased people from interview because of smell. Say if you have not entered and you want to kill me now. Is it when we employ you now that you end my life? Say <laughs> go to people that are distributing it. Salary say, ah, interview is over. I said, you, you do not perceive this man. Ah, he said, that's why I said you will do this one alone. Let him go to his office. I said, I've ended it. There is what I have control over. There's no way I will come and be stressing myself over it. Ah, wear boxer, 10 weeks. <laughs> okay, it looks like that duration of it. <laughs> when you people give me that reaction, eh? it tempts me to want to say things, but I realize this is the bit of the devil. I will not fall for it. <laughs> Don't worry. You've not seen white singlet Tom Brown. <laughs> the soul, education. As a man, it is not argument that makes you a man. It is logic. Your ability, they ask a simple question, you'll be able to answer. Read, you will not read. Newspaper, you don't read. Bible, you don't read. Uh, Google self, you don't read. All you just saying is, ah, no, that's how it happened. No. Ah, if I explain to you how it happened, it's a long story. No. One day, especially if you go and jam. The younger ones of the person you want to marry. You know those are the real test. It is not the girl. The girl can overlook it. But when those children sit you down. I say, uncle. <laughs> what course are you studying? You say it. 
I said, what are you doing? He said, what are you doing? He said, so in your line of study, so do you know what they call uh, artificial intelligence? You just be here now. <laughs> she be is uh, when somebody is intelligent, but they are using artificial things to do it. <laughs> it's when you leave. Because it's family that do the judgment. It is not the girl. It is when you leave. And they just be like, everybody gather around. <laughs> I've been part of some people that are not part of their family, but I've stayed with people where I see them butcher a prospective husband. And like, yeah, Jesus. And when the guy was going, you know, he's going like this. I'm like, if only you know that you are empty, empty nonsense that they are insulting. It's a question you can't answer. They ask you this one. You say, eh, God will reveal to us. What is the plan? God will tell us. Are we going to do this one? God will tell us. What do you do at work? God is showing me. Yeah. These are the issues. Develop your mind. Read. There is audio book now. If you don't want to sit down to read, read. When people tell me they don't have time, I tell them you can't tell me that because I know your itinerary. You don't do as much as I do, but I still read. If you are using the restroom, don't use your phone unless you are reading your Bible. Find a book and read. You will do ten minutes, five minutes, uh, give or take seven minutes. There, you will be amazed at how many chapters you cover. You are traveling. Read. Except you are, you know, those people that when they are reading the moving car, they get nauseated and dizzy. Then I can understand that you, you let it go. Uh, maybe you are just a butter not made for this nation. And you know, if uh, Porto join, <laughs> you will see double. <laughs> but for a man, read. Don't just push knowledge that is not verified. You hear an English word, check the meaning again, even though you know it. You'll be shocked that you read meaning into it. You never really understood the meaning. A boy was joking, but he was really serious on one of the groups I belong to on uh, Facebook. Uh, it's a football group. And a lot of young guys there, 20, 30 and all. Some of us are like, me to say that there. But the guy said something that actually was true for most people. He said, he's saying this and he knows everybody will laugh at him, that he thought Asen Wenga was the one that formed Arsenal Football Club and named it after himself. And he thought like that for years. That is assumed knowledge. <laughs> because Arsen and Arsenal, they look the same. So it's logical to think that way. But if you had verified, he would have realized that it's not true. So at times, some of these things we are th you think you know, you think you know, you just check, say, ah, Jesus. I've been talking nonsense since. They just find a way to dial it back and go and reclaim everything. So as a man, education. Be open-minded. All this, it must always be your way. It must always be your way. It must always be your way. You will not succeed with anything as a man. There are ways to do what you are doing that are better than what you are doing. And there are people that know better than you. I read, I listen. Even those that I know probably are not saying what is reasonable, I still listen. And once in a while, my people ask me, why are you listening to this? I say, because even a bad watch is correct twice. If a watch stopped at 6 p.m. or at 6 a.m. and p.m., if you mistakenly look at it, you are correct. Worst case scenario, you will learn how not to be a fool by studying a fool. So nobody is totally useless. Worst case, we use for a bad example. You can't be useless. So you can learn from somebody. Open your mind. Read. You need to not be too rigid. Not be too flexible as a man. And what I mean is. You should be rigid enough. To maintain a godly standard. But flexible enough to course correct your life. Once you see that this thing I'm doing. Is not working. There is no need staying on foolishly. Course correct it. Say, this is not working. Let me review it. Let me change. And of course, spiritually, proper diet. Read your Bible, pray every day. You can't be too busy not to pray. I saw on Jerry Aziz's video, <laughs> he literally slaughtered guys in that, in that short clip that I saw. He said, they give you your child. He's sick. He's going down. You say, take it to the mother. He said, and you say, you are a man. And it's very correct. You should be the first Defense for attack, not a distributing center. Say, this one, go and meet your mommy. 
He said, Daddy, pray for me. Go and meet your mom. You know, your mother, they are the ones that pray. So what are you? A prayerless fool or something. Proper diet. Read the Bible. Pray. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what makes you a man. I don't wait till the Holy Spirit leads you out of big trouble for you to learn how to follow him. That's why we have a problem. You are coming now. The Holy Spirit says, don't take there. Then you don't take it. Later you go and find out if anything happens, they say nothing. You say it's your mind. It doesn't, nothing has to happen for the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do. It's so that in the days of trouble, it's easy for him to lead you. People want to hear God in crisis when they have not heard him in everyday life. That's why it's prison that corrects a child that doesn't listen under the ages of freedom. They will impose it on you. <laughs> At that point, you have no choice than to listen. Number three. That's my third point I mean now. I'm underscoring some points. Be determined not to be a liability in all things. Man no, woman no, don't be a liability. For example, your contribution as a woman is not money. It is in building of the home. And it's not just the house, it is the home. I mean, a house is not a home. One fantastic uh, song by Luther Vandross many years back. And it still holds true. A house is not a home. The house is the physical uh, part of what you are building. The home is an aggregate of the emotions that you have put inside. And the woman leads that. A woman creates an atmosphere that is conducive for love, unity, and harmony to flow. The man, of course, will also enhance it. Where the woman is falling short. If your home is, uh, what they call that thing now, a war zone, every time there is war, you can never really progress as much as God will want. Because those things, they drain your emotions. Those things, they becloud you. You'll be solving problems that you shouldn't even be bothered about. Because as a woman, you are busy looking for money that you neglect the basic things you should be doing in the house. Don't worry, it's an advanced course in relationship. I'll preach the basic on Sunday. So what kind of environment are you creating in your house? Don't chase him away from the house. Don't suffocate him. Let him breathe. Let your husband be willing to want to come home. My husband doesn't like coming home. My husband, we, we condemn that with all spiritual condemnation. But you too, are you worth coming home to? Because it's unnatural to pursue pain. Nobody wakes up and says, oh, this holy buruku is what I want to follow. This unfortunate issue is what I want to follow. Every discussion with you, every coming home to you is always a problem. No, ma That's why men are the most at beer parlors and pubs more than ladies. And I'm not condoning that in any way. I'm just saying everybody should be determined not to be a liability. As a man, don't be, be willing to kill yourself, in quote now, to put something on the table for your family. No matter how strange. It is a lazy man that should be ashamed. If you are doing something, you have every reason to be proud. He may not build a house, but he's building something. The problem is we have not emphasized labor. We've not emphasized the dignity that comes with bringing 20,000 down because you are watching someone on Facebook and all the social media that have stolen money and is doing great things as it were with it. So you look down on the man that goes, the man that goes to work for the government has not stolen one time. He is a better man than a politician, House of Rep member that is looting and living large. But that is what you want. So it makes a good man feel terrible. You say, I don't have a good man. You can't have a good man. Because God will not give you what you think you deserve. God gives you what you truly, truly believe <laughs> that you want. And that's why you can't blame him. So he still boils back to, ah, I deserve what is good. I am acting evil. He says, shall you, how did he put it now? He says, shall we continually sin and say grace will abound? Can you keep living in a way that doesn't glorify him and you expect him to give you his best or allow you access to his best? When I see a good person married to a bad person, I know one of them missed God or one of them listened to the devil. Because the best things of God is given to the people he trusts. 
So say, I will, so say to yourself, I will not be a liability. I will do something. When your husband is not having enough, don't use that to break his head because you have more than him. That's why you are a helper. Drop something. It's only when he refuses to go and work and he wants to be living off your money. That's where the problem is. But if he's going out and he's working, it's just a matter of time. Number four, or my fourth point. <laughs> be vulnerable with your spouse. If you are not married, be praying it into yourself. Because some of you, uh, some of us are not married, we are more stiff than even the ones that are married. Be vulnerable with your spouse for those of you married. Let your wife, your husband, let him know your weakness. Don't pretend in front of your husband, in front of your wife, when you are supposed to be open. It says they were naked, open, and not ashamed. So that's why we always, I always joke with it, with my wife. I say, mess for me. He said, what's the meaning of that? That's the embarrassing. I said, if you don't mess for me, I won't marry you. Because if you don't mess for me, that means you are keeping secret. Mess for me here. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> Any smart thing. You are, always, you are always the lion in front of your spouse. You are always together. You are always perfect. You are more perfect than Jesus. Be vulnerable. Tell her how you are feeling. If somebody is worrying you and is getting to you, she may provoke. But you see, women now are wiser. They don't provoke. They just know where to turn their prayer to. See, I don't know when I see this person. This is how my body is always doing. Ah. My friend said, if you tell my wife that one, you will pack out of the house. I said, that is why you people are having the crisis you are having. He said, so you can tell your wife. I said, with all boldness. If anything, I said, it's better if she, she stayed. She can't go anywhere. So, like my people say, keep me at home. Don't keep me outside. It's better you are vulnerable with your wife than you go and keep talking to strangers they can't help you they don't have the spirit of God then they damage you more than you even plan for tell your wife if you can't take it then you know that's not supposed to be your wife originally you find somebody else why, why go to the toilet to go and be watching pornography when you can tell your wife I am struggling with this thing let us pray about it why put beer inside brown envelope you, 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 you rubber band it and sellotape it it's only the green bottle where they are seeing. So what is it? It's Ferus. How can Ferus be this big? <laughs> you say it's Ferus. <laughs> say, babe, what are you drinking? It's Ferus. You know Ferus now. Nah? say, let me drink. He said, no, this one is too small. I will buy for you. You should carry it. Say, see, anytime I see this bottle, my body is always vibrating. <laughs> Something keeps calling me. Say, I should come. I should come. I remember my boy said today that he doesn't know that he was supposed to fast and all that. He says, but the way food envelopes him at 11.30, that he doesn't even know how to say no. I think that's how you know that it is a spiritual battle. <laughs> I think because when you are not fasting, you will not even feel that way. And, of course, we spoke, I, I told, that is how you grow as a Christian. You can't prove to me that you are spiritual, but you are probably you are struggling. You are just doing yourself. Let us know where. So that we know where to pray to, where to tell all the message. We didn't definitely get here by hiding. I've had people, fantastic people, leaders, say, oh, this is what happened. Pray with me. It doesn't reduce you. Connecting to strength. When you confess your fault to one another, you are connecting to strength. It's not a reduction. It's all this madness that we have uh, glorified that makes everybody think it's all about we are better. We are not better than each other. We are only different. It's in the world that they measure who is better. In the kingdom, God deals with differences. So be vulnerable with your Tell your wife the way you are going. If this thing reaches four weeks and the Holy Ghost does not move, something else will happen. As to those that understand uh, the words of Christ. Yes. Say, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. And as a married man, married to your wife, <laughs> like a couple friend of ours years ago, that the wife has to be masturbating because the husband refused to touch the wife. I said, ah, you people are keeping quiet. Say, so both of you, your, 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 your madness is beyond repair. Say, so you better shout to your pastor and let them help you people. Because God gave marriage to solve that. You'll be like, no, I don't need it. I'm all right. No problem. <laughs> we are waiting. Next thing you will say, <laughs> she's pregnant for me. I don't know how it happened. We know how it happened. Your foolishness led to it. Because you were doing strength when you should not do strength.
Don't use faith when you need <laughs> facts and figures to make decisions. I've had to correct that even in my own marriage. I'm not your... <laughs> well, when I'm your pastor, I'm your pastor, I'm your pastor. So if something is wrong with you or if something is happening, give me the figures. Give me what they said. Don't use faith with me. Because faith does not even deny facts. For God to change the world again, he himself acknowledged that it was dark, empty, and void. Before he says, let the spirit move. So your own faith that is negating facts, that is why it's not working. Faith colors those things that be. Facts. As though they are not. Faith. Faith doesn't work without substance. The substance of it is the facts that you are facing. So, go to the hospital and do a test, for instance, now. You say, I'm using faith. No, you are just afraid. If they tell me now it's HIV, <laughs> what will I do? And as they say, the knowledge of HIV kills faster than even the virus itself. You say, I'm not going. But you see, faith deals in worst-case scenarios. That I've been trying to force <laughs> into my wife's head. He doesn't, I said, faith deals with worst case scenarios. Jesus dying for us was not a knee jerk reaction from God. It was before the foundations of the earth. Thou art worthy uh, because you were, what is the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth? So God has already thought of the worst case scenario that Adam messes up. I have a solution. Faith will work when you have a worst case scenario. If you have cancer now, with the faith that you think you have, can you survive it? You better start measuring your faith and don't lie to yourself. Because what you are thinking is with the money I have now, before we spend 50%, I will see the best doctors. <laughs> that is a solution. But for those of us that don't have it, <laughs> that we live by faith every day, so that's why we build faith. That's why faith and leading of the Holy Spirit, there are things that you always see crisscross into whatever I teach. Because that just shall live by his faith. So develop your faith. That if this happens to me now, can I survive? If your job goes, can you still be a Christian? You don't lose your job. Amen. Red flags. That was just me laying foundation. Red flags. <laughs> Watch out for red flags. Red flags are warning signs that tells you to stop and do audit of things. There are things that can't wait, but you have to attend to. There are things that can't be ignored. They can't tell you you are driving on a road and they tell you ditch ahead, turn back, and you stick, keep going. You have to attend to that sign and turn back. And in the context of relationships, there are things that you need to audit. Either you are married, the points I will make the cross across both married and single. Either you are married or single, these are things, they are not things, I've not said things to stop you or divorce. Of course, if you are not married, you are free to change your mind. Red signs or red flags, they are stop and ponder signs. There are things that you will see that you need to stop and think about them. You went out on a date. You've already fixed your marriage date. And you say, let's just keep cruising. And you went out on a date and somebody uh, upset him on the way. And he, he beat that person till he took four people to wrestle the person out of his hand. As in the guy's eyeballs were already coming out like he will kill him. He just looked at her and said, baby, sorry, I, I lost my temper. Ah, uncle, you did not lose your temper. You are mad, you are. <laughs> you are the spirit of temper that people lose. <laughs> you did not lose your temper. <laughs> Those are stop and ponder signs. People can pretend. Don't get me wrong. But I believe in time. So that's why I've never been a fan of uh, we meet ourselves today, uh, American uh, relationship, we marry tomorrow. I I've never been a fan of that. My oversight did, that he did his own for eight years. I also, <laughs> I'm a bit uh, <laughs> weary of that as well. <laughs> I believe in God's timing. God's timing is a function of your relationship with him. So there are stop and ponder signs. There are stop and review signs. Ponder, think about it to make a decision. Review. You've already made the decision now. You are reviewing it. That <laughs> this abroad, that you have already said you will go abroad. And 
You said, okay, we marry, four years time, we, we settle, then the fifth year, we'll go abroad. While you are still uh, planning wedding, that's you fix the date. Then you see your fiance, or is it your fiance in either male or female now, and he's buying winter jacket. Buying winter boot. Ha! You are saying, what, what, what do you want to do with this? I said, I'm preparing for our foreign trip. <laughs> you should know <laughs> that you are the one thinking five years, She's thinking five months. The moment you ring it like this, the next thing you are hearing is, I'm tired of this country. This country. One cannot make it in this country. And for those of you that keep saying that, be wise and stop saying stupid things. The richest people in Africa, they are from Nigeria. Dangote number one, Alakija number two. That's Dangote for men, Alakija for women. They did not make their money abroad. They made it in Nigeria. And there is no one on Forbes that made the money outside their nation. Go and check it. By all means, leave. Because as people are leaving, we are making more money. You know, once you reduce in population, the money that will go around is more. So you now have to do things to make sure you trap more to yourself. So me, I'm not against you not leaving. But please, stop saying that one cannot make it in Nigeria. You are just either lazy or a course is following you that we cannot break. You can make it here. You will make it here. <laughs> While others are saying there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up. So they are stop and review signs. They are stop and ask question signs. Ask question. The man is saying, I want to build an industry. But the only industry you are seeing is a protruding stomach. 200,000, 30,000 goes to food. Just his own food. Eating like he's a bus driver. Oh, you bus drivers. They are the ones that eat like there's no future because they do daily things. Don't worry. Let me not run ahead of finance from it. We'll get there. You make the money today. Because in their head, they drive again tomorrow, they will count money. So you see them, Amala, two. Bokoto, six. Uh, inside, six. Uh, outside, six. Leg, six. Everything, six. So you see, well, you can have this function, sha. When there is a problem during driving, you can use the stomach to stop the steering. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, if you are seeing things that you don't understand. Ask questions. It's not the only spirit that, married, that wants to marry you or that married you. It is your husband. Men don't actually like questions. But you have to ask it all the same. I have answered questions. I am still answering questions. What is it about me that motivated you? <laughs> you will answer questions. But if there are things that you don't understand, you ask questions. You agree that your children are going to go this direction, and all of a sudden you see another member at work in your husband. You should ask questions. That baby, oh sorry, this is what we said. I'm not questioning you because most times it's the way women put it that causes trouble. You come like you are uh, that you are also uh, how do I put it now? That you are commander and lord. And nothing raises a man's ego, especially a man that has not submitted to the Holy Spirit, like the tone of your question. You know, communication is just 20% of what you say. The real communication is 80% of how you say it. And as a man, you must understand that too. So don't use everything your wife says to judge her. Because there is a way they speak. Let me give you a good example. If God is dealing with me on something, and I say, oh, my wife, this is what God has been dealing with me on, and uh, thank God I obeyed. I already said I obeyed, I didn't do it. Oh. Then you say, then don't do it. Oh. Then, <laughs> <laughs> she's seen herself in the mirror in the past didn't used to provoke me that what are we saying what is this one saying i'm telling you a reported speech of what has happened and you're commanding me that i should not do it oh. until one of you ask me say she's just buttressing what you are saying that thank god you didn't do it it's just the way you are hearing it so i stopped hearing it that way so this morning okay she still said i just said something he said ah don't do it oh then he said i mean I'm, i said don't worry i understand what you're saying don't explain that I know that you are just trying to tell me that thank God I did not do it. So you two, every time, you are holding on to, hey, this is how she stand there. You, you, you two self, you are jobless. Is the problem you are chasing not enough that you want to come and be analyzing everything a woman is doing? What did I spoke to the devil? Uh -huh. I said stop and ask question signs. Red flags. They are stop and do a research sign. You were just gisting. And you mistakenly hear 
third year and everybody that married in our house, their wife always died. <laughs> That's not the time. <laughs> Forgive me. I've looked at my notes. I look, it's, only, it's the only example that I have. I've tried to change it. That's not the time you just say, oh, our God will take care of us. Yes. <laughs> but if you ask for that, say, ah, sorry, oh, which family? And says, eh, the Ogundeko family. Say, eh, your own father. So, that's your elder brother. You say, ah, that's the second wife. Oh. <laughs> that is younger brother. I say, ah, that's the third wife. Say. That we don't know what happened to the second one. She just walked away. We didn't see her. That's not the time for him to say it's just one of those things. Go and do research. Then go back to God. Now see, I've been redeemed from the course of the law. But I don't know if this person you gave me, if he has been redeemed fully. So you ask him, say, what is your own stand concerning this thing? Then he says, ah, well, what's going to be is going to be. <laughs> you should not pick his call the next day. When he calls you, say, when you deal with what is chasing you, you can come and talk to me. Because I redeemed not from the cause of the law, but the devil always use familiar spirits to want to operate. And familiar spirits work through genealogy. That is what in some quarters they call generational causes. Even though people say, oh, there's nothing like that. We are just trying to make uh, an error out of a truth. If medical science tells you that if your mom had cancer, there's a probability you have it, then you'll be foolish to say there is nothing like ancestry passing things to you. But you shut the door against it. Because it says, if the Son of God shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That you are made free does not mean you are free. You have to push the freedom. How many of us are living below God's plan for our lives? Because we have not risen up to push and receive that which God wants for us. Are you getting something tonight? Yes, Hope I'm not boring you. So there is stop and do research science. Red flag, let me give you one more. There is stop and decide science. The red flag says you to stop and decide. That's why I left that at the end. You have reviewed, you have asked questions, you have pondered, you have done research. The last thing is for you to decide. When you decide, don't blame anybody. My friends made me, eh, eh, I don't really like him or is my friends. Because there is a phenomenon that they say that is the friends that approve who the uh, lady will end up marrying. Now, if they don't like you, at the end of the day, it won't work. But my own case was not like that. Why well, didn't have many friends? In fact, they have any friends. So nobody was able to review me. <laughs> so boys, you can pray ahead. That every demonic friend. Friend that wants to do the work of the devil. <laughs> That will be marking you wrong where God is marking you, yes. Say, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Don't say that by fire. That they should go that they should go elsewhere and you or when your case will be tabled, they will not be there. Maybe they'll be running stool, or they will have somewhere to go, party to attend, then the lady will have decided. Because truly, when they gather <laughs> to dissect, <laughs> it's like they put your mother in which is covered. <laughs> you will not remain the same. See, and see how he's working. I don't even like his beard. It's too spiky. So you, self, that uh, you want to be in love, you just realize that they are pulling the strand of love, just tearing it out. So at times, you must even audit your friends because they can be the red flag. Oh, they can be. One of my girls had to separate from friends. And every time I see her, I say, no, my life is better. <laughs> because friend at times, if God is not giving you, they will not be after your progress. Some of them just want you uh, to be an example that they can use to discuss among other people. That can't you see his life? Can't you see? It's not a Christian thinking, but Christians at times, they are caught into that. But we are supposed to provoke ourselves onto good works. We are supposed to challenge each other and make each other better. Can I have an Amen. amen. So, red flags are very important. Human beings were so funny. When there was COVID, people were quick to don face masks. Some even refused to shake their wives. <laughs> Some their wives go out during that period, come back, they quarantine, uh, the love of their life themselves. Say, just stay in the room. When nothing happens to you, then you can come out. If they tell you now that they are shooting at JDP Junction, and that's the fastest way to your house. You know, you will go through Okuru Rand and pass the jungle. Just to say, where are you? Say, 
to be to, to be alive is better. Those are red flags. The physical ones we take cognizance of them, but the important ones we seem to treat it anyhow. Let me see if I can finish the red flags. Values. That's the first one. What's important to the person? You have been married. You were important before. Now you are not important anymore. He used to see you. But now he doesn't see you anymore. It seems that you don't exist. The focus has shifted. That's a red flag. You should ask, am I in this marriage alone? Is there another <laughs> to come? <laughs> or I am he that has already arrived? values what is important to the person that says he wants to marry if god is not important to them for instance you may both enjoy it make it but at the end of the day it's always going to show how they treat other people values the driving force of their lives you should look at that anything you say you hear if a man doesn't have money if you have problem call god if it is money for chopping, call me. If there's no enjoyment, find another person. You you watch movies together. Movies actually reveals people's values. You want to know an unforgiving person? Go and look for movies where the bad person is the one winning. That's Mama G. Killing everybody. <laughs> killing everybody. Killing everybody. Then, two minutes to the end of the movie, she received Christ and she doesn't die. Once you feel, ah, no, that should not be you. You check, it's, it's, a, it's a pointer to your own spirit. He says you should rejoice over a soul that gets born again. Now, metaphorically, a soul is getting born again and you are not rejoicing. You are an unforgiving person because you believe in karma, not in Jesus. You believe that every wickedness must be punished and not be forgiven. Yes, there are consequences. But most times, we don't even determine the consequences. <laughs> What is important to them, how they treat others, the driving force of their life. What propels them? You have a call. And the person you are with cannot stand human beings. You, you better go and look. You are even better married to the devil. Because the devil at least can stand human beings and kill them. This one cannot stand anything. So it's better you just move. If not, you will never fulfill that call. <laughs> you can't be married to somebody that your values are not the same. You are working to stay in Nigeria and blossom in your business. Everything she's doing is to make sure it doesn't work so that you can relocate. In that case, relocate. Number two, thought patterns. Those are red flags. How does the person think? My vernacular, they call it our bad boy. You are looking at the bad boy. He's or you that you are still looking at. The thought pattern. How does the person think? Does the thinking, is it logical? Is it improving? Because at times it may not be logical, but if it's improving, there is hope. But you can't keep a mindset that is just. Can you predict the reaction? There's an unpredictability about all of us. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be there. But predominantly, you should be able to predict. Uh, people that went to represent me at one concert like that, they enjoyed it. And they were like, ah, if we can do this. And they all came to the conclusion, and they were correct, that pastor will not agree. Because they know <laughs> where I stand. I said, no, that I will not agree. I can agree if these conditions are met. It's not a big issue. First condition, we are not inviting any outsider. You will have to minister and bring God's glory down. But at least I was happy <laughs> that they know where I stand. We don't know where you stand. It shows your thought pattern. You are a 419. And if you are with anybody, for those married, you see the thought pattern changing, call the attention of each other to it. You are not married and you can't trust the thinking. It is always criminic in nature. There is no word like criminic. I derived it from criminal. Every thinking is how to dupe somebody. If the thinking is how to... I mean, you will be the victim. You say, ah, this guy, he did this to this lady and, he, and the lady was so ah, broken and all that. And the next thing you are hearing, you are not hearing, ah, that's not good. You say, ah, he shouldn't have done it like that. Though. If you had done it like this, they will escape this way. Thought patterns. Because out of the abundance of the heart or out of the abundance of our thoughts, our mouth will speak. You can't speak inconsistent with your nature. It is impossible. But we don't just take it serious. Our friend married in... What year did that boy marry in? 2010, Abby. The one month... 2010. He married in 2010. 
2009, that was March 27, 2009, I remember I followed him to the in-laws place somewhere along Rumola. They gave us fantastic uh, reception. Very wealthy man, billionaire by all ranks. I mean, the plate that they used to serve the food is more expensive than the food that they gave us. And we went there for a reconciliation meeting because my friend and the fiancé were fighting. Serious one. The parents were involved now. And the mother in solving the problem made a statement that my friend ignored, but they never left me. Because we had begged. And I was like, ah, me, I don't even follow people to beg people. So if you see me, yeah, big boy like me begging, you should take it easy. I was just joking. When I said, I don't know what's wrong with Timo, what, what's wrong with wrong with how that we that were wondering we will come home self to say he wants to marry you. Now you have seen somebody you are posing. And she smiled, my friend laughed. We left them here. I told him, oh, so that statement is deep. Oh. He said, ah, they are just, ah, so you take things too serious. Anyway, they accuse me of that all the time. So, okay, sorry. A few moments later, they were breaking his jaw with perfume bottle. And I'm like, the mother warned you. Married February 14th. By February 13th of the same year, they had broken up. Their marriage didn't last one year. Is is in UK, I mean US now. She is married to somebody here, uh, which I pray she has changed. Because if she has not, I, I don't think she's fit to marry, actually. That's why Solomon said, the world cannot stand it. When an unlovable woman finds her husband. It is an aberration. Broke his jaw, but they suture it together. My friend. <laughs> God forgive me. Like I still get the kick out of it. Because it was warned. That's a red flag. Somebody wants to marry the mother made that statement. I'm not saying you should break up. <laughs> but it's something you pause and ponder. A parent shouldn't even make that kind of statement. So you should even know that it's the Holy Spirit that pushed them. So we keep saying Holy Spirit did not help me. What more do you want him to do? Break your head and just tell you this is the way. Work in it. Work in it. You can't do that. Thought patterns. Thought patterns. Improving thought patterns. You should, if you solve the problem first year in marriage, same problem should not be solved the same way the second year. You should improve. I was always I like talking to uh, all these engineers that God has blessed with their ministers. Because we talk to them about their work, you see that there's always something new, something innovative. The world is moving. How come you as a Christian, you are not improving? It says be renewed by the transforming, outward, inward growth. Your mind moving from where it is to another level. I can't think better than the information you have. Number three. Red flag, I won't finish, obviously. <laughs> Family background. I've mentioned that already, generational issues. It doesn't mean you should break. The person I was with before my wife, daughter of uh, the chief abalist of their place. <laughs> and I did my investigation and I'm like, I'm sorry. She was looking for a savior. I said, Jesus is the only savior. I cannot come out from where I'm coming out from to go in to fight another war. I didn't come to this war to fight wars. I came to this world to fulfill purpose. That was where problem, weakness, and purpose, that's where it was born. That's when God taught me that entire concept. So then I wrote in the book, it took me 15 years. I wasn't just writing for the sake of writing. Because everybody, even some of my friends condemned me, but it doesn't really bother me. We are still friends. The ones that can't be friends, they have moved because separation is in God's plan. We have to separate. We cannot be together forever. So I will not hold on to anyone God is not giving me. So ask question. I've given you an example. There are families that hold on to things that are dangerous. It doesn't make the girl a bad person, but you need to know. Our daughter asked, uh, the last time we called her, she, they, they, treating some topics in school that has to do with um, uh, female mutilation. What's that thing called again? Uh? That's circumcision, female circumcision. And uh, the next thing my daughter said, uh, Daddy, did you... Uh, did you and mommy remove my clitoris? I said, ah, wh wh where is that question coming from? First and foremost. He said, just answer. I said, no, you two answer me first. I'm your father. Answer me first. He said, no, they are doing this in class and they are teaching them this. She just felt she should ask. Ah. I said, I'm going to on. <laughs> say, okay. Let me explain it to you. That even though we have short time to speak, when you come home, I will teach you the rest. But this is the concept. This is how we started. This is what led to it. And they do it in some places, but it's not that rampant anymore. I said, but the day will not come that anybody will touch you for that unless they want to lose their life. So you are intact. 
nothing broken, nothing damaged. Say, so don't bother. I said, oh, okay. He said, because the teacher said some people, I know these teachers at times, eh? I don't want to me by me. That some people, they can do it for them and not know. See, 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 because, because they are authority figures. We are battling what these teachers are teaching at home. So don't hide things. Respect. It's in the family background. If they see beating, and I'm going to make examples that may make sound somehow, but you know one of the things God gave me is wisdom. So, do you know adultery is not really a big deal for people that are from polygamous family? Naturally. When I mean not big deal, even where people like us, we don't engage in it, it, it doesn't enamor us. You that you have only known uh, American father, American mother, they hold their hands and swing. They do everything. Ah, you see daddy feed mommy uh, juice. They feed the, uh, apple, apple cider, vinegar, and all these things. <laughs> They are, giving, they are giving themselves. You will not understand. When you now find out, that's why some people say they killed themselves because they found out that their uh, spouse or was cheating or their daddy did something. They say the lady caught us. I said, ha! Ah. You know when I started reading foreign books, I was like, maybe there's something wrong in Africa. <laughs> because we used to sit and wait for action. When my daddy's, ah, my father. When my daddy's fourth wife, <laughs> That is the friend of the third wife. Now, I call their wife because she was just a friend. When they are fighting, we used to wait. Say, ah! Say, we will win this fight. <laughs> because we didn't care anymore. We were desensitized to it. So, those are things you need to talk to each other about. So, that what will make you shout? The person is not shouting. You say, eh, he has a bad mind. No. <laughs> Naturally, men don't even shout about things. So, when you see a man running, <laughs> <laughs> you should ask. You should ask questions. <laughs> you should ask yourself questions. Jump in the lane or something. Say, is this a man or something is wrong? But the woman shouting, I don't like it. But it is who they are. You know, if there is a small problem. Your wife's reaction can give you a heart attack. <laughs> hey, let me face it. I, I pray you give me dinner today. <laughs> I say, ah, ah, honey. Ah, he said, sorry. I'm just, I'm just concerned. Say, hey, you say it to my wife. Say, hey, again. I'll be like, I just want you now. So I just say, say, just leave here, please. Just leave. Just leave me alone. <laughs> then a few minutes later, we've solved the problem. He said, you solved. I said, because you are shouting, I will not even think straight. Now imagine when you are now the man. He said, my old wife, you can say, hey, Chimo. <laughs> yeah, say, your wife say, ah, but babe, there is so. I say, ah, there is no. You better come. Let me let me cancel all that nonsense. That mad demon. Let me chase it out. <laughs> so you have to look at respect. Do they respect women? Because you blame men at times, but it is what some of them have seen. They don't know any other example. So you need to ask. Then you should retrain. Either you are married or there are things I had to learn all over again. Because, for example, sharing information is not one of my things. Because I like, I've never been a loner. So I do my thing. So I say, hey, you didn't explain this to me. And I'll be like, ah. <laughs> explain. <laughs> he used to he tells me, say, I'll be explaining to you. Then in my mind, devil will now say, a woman for that matter. I say, hey, you to look at it now. You hold me. And I say, yeah, sit down. Hey, what I want to do is this one, is that. But now, self, when they don't ask, I explain. Because let there be peace. It's a strong statement. If you want problem, keep proving strong head. Probably I'm not going to leave you. But you want peace, just explain. She needs to explain. Say, ah, this and this is no. <laughs> I don't want to ask questions. That one, I will teach you in another class. For guys only now. How to explain without inciting another question. Because some of you don't know how to explain. You will explain halfway, halfway, halfway. Curiosity is aroused in women. Just give the first package as a bomb. Complete. Boom. She will be the one saying, okay, so. What? I said, okay, said this one. For you, you know that you have uh, put it in. Then you just continue watching what you are watching. After a while, my wife, you upgraded her system. <laughs> I'll be like, this part I don't understand. I say, is it everything? You must understand. <laughs> because these are the issues. Say, okay, this is what I mean here. I say, so why didn't you explain it fully? I say, why must I explain it? Say, let me retain some part of me that wants to feel like the husband. But explain doesn't make you less a husband. Being vulnerable doesn't make you less a man. It is culture that we are all battling, not the Bible. 
Abraham and his wife were so into each other that the woman gave her, gave him, said, take my maid, go and sleep with my maid. They were vulnerable with each other. Can Christians, have, I'm sorry. This message is going, this message is going to another dimension. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, stay with the first point. They were vulnerable with each other that they were discussing their weakness. Don't say I did not cancel that too. <laughs> Also, the amount of crazy people in each other's family. I'm still on family background. I'm not going to rush it. You know, some family have crazy people. In fact, let me rephrase. Every family, they have the sane and the insane. So you should calculate the amount of insane people <laughs> before. <laughs> You don't worry. You will I'm actually even doing this because of the what's that next generation now? Gen Z, Alpha, Alpha and Omega. What is Sume? It's because of them I'm doing all this hard work. Because some of you, you have already in your mind is too. You, you are dry fish to bend yourself. It's difficult. But calculate the amount of crazy people there. If you are married into my own family, biological family, for instance, if you don't have thick skin, you will not survive. So when I was taking my wife home, I sent her home on her own. I had a wedding. That's January of uh, 2007, because it was December that we married. Benga who was married that January, Jebode. So I told her I was going to stop, because Benga has been my friend for many years, She's in Canada now, that just take transport here, that when you get to the park at Kuto, somebody's waiting for you to pick you. He said, I'm going alone. I said, that's the only way this is going to work. That if you survive, before tomorrow, then you survive all the crazy people. You know, at times when I say those things, it looks imaginary to you. You start saying, is it like that? Or pastor is overboard. But my wife knows what I'm talking about. By the time I was 12 midnight, she was already texting me. Say, ah, I didn't like this, what you did. I say, endure them. If they don't kill you before morning. They put her in the mist. There was no, there was no electricity that day and they had not put on jet. My dad came, but Suya and all those things to welcome daughter-in-law to be. But he said they should put her in the middle first. All of them point touch light on her head. <laughs> My father said, okay. <laughs> that this is for you. <laughs> so she asked me, if she wasn't whatever, he said that Suya, they will carry it inside. Then they will have another meeting waiting for me to tell me all the things that cannot make it work. And I said, this Suya is for you. Don't give anybody oh. Eat it alone. And in one of them there, say if you disturb her, you will see trouble. Say take him to your brother's room. That was all. Then I say, ah, this is what happened. I said, then you have passed. <laughs> because the crazies, they are a bit, uh, <laughs> they are a bit plenty. They can, if Jesus comes, they can abuse Jesus. <laughs> so if you are the one that is sensitive, when they give you first one, second one, <laughs> and you start reacting, ah, they say, ah, you can't be our sister-in-law. <laughs> Can't be a sign of them because yeah, we used to make fun of people <laughs> for free. They all make fun of themselves and they don't know it as anything evil. Take stock of the crazies. And if it's not something you can handle, let your spouse know. It is not it, all I'm saying does I'm not saying break the relationship. Right? You notice I've not said that. I'm just telling you red flags, things that you can't ignore. If not, you'll be having problems with your in-law every day. Then they say they want to come and greet their brother. I say, never. Nobody. Say, so I've, I've told God before I married that nobody is going to stay with us. We don't take anybody. Babe, if you try it, there's going to be a problem. I've seen things, so. <laughs> I've seen things. I pray people, just forgive me at times. Say, so, babe, there's going to be a problem. You that in the court come and say to me, you have forgotten yourself. All you are looking at is drama. Say, so, ah. Say, so, on this small issue, me English, what do we? Say, let them stay. Worst case, madam make it difficult for them to stay long. That's all. Third room, don't put AC. Don't put net. <laughs> when they are... Bring out your offering. I'll continue on Sunday. <laughs> you people are not... Uh, <laughs> you people are not... Uh, people who can teach wisdom <laughs> at all. I've not finished this uh, family background. I'm starting from there on Sunday. So, in case I forget, remind me. That's number three, Abby. Make sure... The fan is not uh, working well. You know there are some fans when you put it on here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Three days after, believe me. <laughs> 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 they will just tell you, brother. 
<laughs> it's been nice being with you. We are going home. <laughs> but if it is a good in-law, then let it be easy for them to stay. <laughs> with these few things of mine, I hope you have learned something tonight <laughs> that you can go with. The other one, I'm not the one that taught you. <laughs> it is just what it is. But God will bless your homes. Your relationship is blessed. For the singles, you will not make mistakes. You will not marry wrongly. You will not uh, pick the devil's alternative. Bow your heads and just speak to Jesus.